Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Destiny video. Now this week's Bungie update has just dropped, and it's a big one, like megaton size big. It's so big that it spanned two separate posts. And the main topic of conversation today is weapon balancing. Yes, that's right, the long-awaited topic, it is finally being spoken about. So let's get right into it. If you do enjoy this video, then it'd be mega awesome if you can hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Now, about that update. When I said it was big, I wasn't joking. It took me ages to sift through all the information this week and work out just how I was gonna condense it down into a video for you guys. So this is how I'm gonna do it. The post this week talks about weapon balancing for both weapon archetypes and for individual exotics. The balancing notes are basically broken down into a summary paragraph followed by Bungie's goals for the weapon or the archetypes and lastly the actual changes coming our way. So in this video I'm just going to go over the changes themselves but if you want to read the whole thing and find out the reasoning behind the changes then you'll find the post linked in the description box down below. Also before I get started these changes are set to drop in September just before the Taken King comes out. Now with that out of the way let's start by talking about the balancing coming to the individual weapon archetypes. First up auto rifles. They will see an increase to base damage Damage falloff will start closer to the player to emphasize its role as a close to medium range weapon. There will be a small reduction in base stability, but landing shots at the optimal range will obviously be unaffected, but repeated precision hits will require more weapon control to land consistently. And they're also gonna boost damage by 10% against AI combatants. Then moving on to pulse rifles. First up, they will reduce the base damage of the medium rate of fire by about 2.5%, and in PvP, burst to kill is two or three, depending on the victim's armor stat. There'll also be a small reduction in base stability, but a burst will still land all shots at optimal range, but three precision hits will require more weapon control to land consistently. And they're also gonna increase magazine size on all of the base inventory stats. Then moving over to scout rifles, there'll be an increase to base damage for medium to high rate of fire scout rifles. And as a side note, this won't affect the time to kill in PVP on a guardian with full health. There'll also be an increase in magazine size for all base inventory stats. They will reduce the final accuracy when firing from the hip, and fast firing outside of aiming down sights will be less accurate. There'll also be a boost to damage by 5% against AI combatants. Then moving over to hand cannons. Firstly, they are gonna start the damage falloff closer to the player to limit long range lethality. In other words, this is designed to try and reduce hand cannons effectiveness at long ranges. There'll also be a small reduction in aim down sights accuracy, and the idea for this is making long range snap shooting again less reliable. They're also gonna reduce the final accuracy when firing from the hip, and fast firing from the hip is less reliable. They will reduce the magazine size for all base inventory stats, and they will reduce base optics, i.e. the zoom, for all hand cannons, and aiming down sights now grants more width in favor of depth. Then moving over to shotgun. Now shotgun perks that enhance lethality at range should be less effective when combined with a high initial range stat. The shot package accuracy buff is going to be reduced by 30%. Rangefinder will now add a 5% base range increase on aim down sights as opposed to the previous 20%. The precision damage multiplier on shotguns will be reduced by 10%. And they're also going to reduce damage against AI combatants by 10%. Then moving over to fusion rifles. Slow charging, high impact fusion rifles will have decreased range values. They're gonna make it more difficult to max out range for these weapons. Projectile speed for fusion rifles is slightly reduced, and this in turn obviously emphasizes the need to lead a target outside the medium range. They will improve accuracy for short range fusion rifles, and they will reduce accuracy for long range fusion rifles. Then as for sniper rifles, Bungie said that largely they are happy with the way the sniper rifles perform, apart from one main thing, final round. Oh yes, this is something I'm extremely happy about. The final round perk is now getting a much needed nerf. Final round will now work as follows. On sniper rifles, it will now buff precision damage only, not base damage. And what that basically means is that if you want the final round perk to activate or kind of be effective, you need to land a precision shot. So you can't just shoot off your bullets, have final round ready to go and then land a body shot for a kill. You will need to land a headshot. And it's also worth noting that this change only affects this perk when it's combined with a sniper rifle. So other things like hand cannons with final round will not abide by this change. But sniper rifles, you will now have to, or at least when the change comes in September, you will have to land a precision shot if you want final round to trigger. And I'm gonna say this right now, I know a lot of people out there with final round are probably gonna hate me for saying it, but you know what? 
I don't care. In Trials of Osiris, it's ridiculous. When you hear someone fire off their bullets just because they want to stack that final round and get a cheap body shot, that is not cool. So at least this way, it's going to kind of separate the people that can actually snipe and the people that were just using it as a cheap tactic. Anyway, moving away from that, then on to rocket launchers. There's going to be a slight increase to base blast radius and the grenades and horseshoes proximity destination has been reduced. This is to kind of allow people to sort of slip past rockets a little bit more easily and it also means that people firing rockets do need to be a little bit more accurate with their aim. Right, okay, so if you've made it this far, then thank you for sticking around. Those are the changes coming to the various weapon categories. Now let's move on to the changes coming to the individual exotics. First up, hard light. The base stability is going to get an increase to 80, whereas it was previously 65. They're going to increase the bounce count for hard light projectiles, and hard light projectiles are not affected by damage fall off. Then moving on to the joke of Crotus and Raid and the Necrochasm, it is finally getting some decent changes. They are firstly going to increase the base stability to 60, whereas it was previously 40. They are going to increase the magazine size. The Cursebringer perk will always trigger on a precision kill. And the Cursebringer explosion has increased radius and deals more damage. Then as for the last word, they're going to reduce the range stat to 10 when it was previously 20. They're going to reduce stability to 20 when it was previously 30. They will reduce the effective range while aiming down sights. They will increase the accuracy and precision damage aim assist scale when firing from the hip. And they've also fixed the bugs with hip fire bonus damage applying incorrectly. Then moving on to Thorn, the other hot topic of conversation right now, they're going to reduce the base damage of Thorn's Mark of the Devourer damage over time to roughly a third of what it was in PvP and PvE. They're also going to allow the damage over time to stack up to five times across multiple landed projectiles. This is basically a net buff for Thorn's damage over time, but reduces the lethality of the weapon in PvP. So while I will admit that I do use Thorn and I do like the weapon, I am still genuinely glad to see this change coming because in all honesty, I think it's just going to breathe some much needed life back into the Crucible and add some variety and people are finally going to start switching weapons. Then as for Hawkmoon, this is obviously one right now just for PlayStation owners, but they have added a stack limit to luck in the chamber and holding aces, so that only two of the bonus perks will ever stack on one round and this will basically prevent Hawkmoon from one hit killing full health players in PvP. They've also added two rounds to Hawkmoon's magazine when holding aces is unlocked, and the luck in the chamber damage bonus has been reduced by 3%. Moving on from there, you then have a change coming to Icebreaker. I honestly didn't see this one coming because I didn't really think Icebreaker was that bad, but they have now increased the charge time or the recharge time for the Icebreaker rounds to one every eight seconds as opposed to one every five seconds as it was before. Then moving on to No Land Beyond. They have increased the weapon handling speed for faster time to aim, ready and slow. They've adjusted the sights to fix the overlap and parallax issue while aimed. They've increased the time decay of the master to 8 seconds. And an additional 20% precision damage bonus while the master is active. Then the next one is a strange one, Black Hammer. Yes, I know this is not an exotic, but it was included in the post given that it's the only legendary sniper rifle that really stands up to something like Icebreaker as a genuine PvE destroyer. And unfortunately, the reason it's here is because it's going to get a nerf. Black Hammer's ammo capacity is going to be increased to 18 rounds. However, the White Nail perk will now pull ammo directly from your inventory. So it will still work in that if you land three consecutive precision shots, it will reload the magazine. But whereas right now it will reload your magazine from an infinite ammo supply, now, or at least kind of when this update drops in September, it will instead refill it based on what you already have. So that's why they've increased the ammo capacity, but once those 18 rounds are gone, the Black Hammer effect will obviously no longer kick in because you'll have no ammo to actually replenish the magazine. Then next up you have Lord of Wolves, which for the most part they said they were pretty happy with, but they have tripled the recovery boost bonus for allies granted by Lord of Wolves. And then the big one. This one is going to be the one that people are not going to be too happy about, simply because I know a lot of people still don't have this gun, but Yalahorn. They have reduced the damage of Wolfpack rounds. Now to anyone that has a yellow horn, they will obviously tell you it is a ridiculously powerful rocket launcher, and to anyone that doesn't have it, obviously there's a reason you want it. This is obviously going to be another contentious thing, and I'm probably going to get hate for saying this, but I think this is also a good nerf. The problem with Destiny right now as well, with things like yellow horn, is that if you go on anything like Destiny LFG, people are basically just saying, if you don't have a yellow horn, we're not going to bring you in the group, and they basically just drop you out, and it creates this sort of weird elitist attitude around certain like end game PV activities whereby people think the only way to complete activities is to basically unload your Yalahorn rockets in the face of the enemy. And that's just not true. You take something like Skolas for example, it can be completed using the conventional boss mechanics, but people would much rather grab Yalahorn and shoot Skolas in his face. So the point is, yes it may well be annoying and yes obviously people are going to have to relearn some tactics, 
but I think in the general grand scheme of things, it is obviously better for Destiny's future. And on that bombshell, that, my friends, is pretty much it. As mentioned, if you do want to understand the justification behind any of these nerfs or buffs, then do check out the full post linked in the description box down below. And then just before I wrap up the video, the last thing worth mentioning is that in the first post, DJ outlined what we'll be seeing in next week's update. And that is a preview of the new weapon foundries and what we'll be looting in the Taken King. So that's some exciting stuff and looks like we're going to get a look at some brand new weapons. And again, just to recap, the balancing changes I went over are coming in September, just before the Taken King. Don't forget to hit that like button if you guys did enjoy the video and let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of these changes. And thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.